Hi, this is Moresh, and today we will try and understand how OpenDAO stable coins built on the Yumi protocol work. Uh, so these are based on the perpetual contracts, and the perpetual contracts are an evolution of the expiring contracts. So the Y dollar was the version one, and the perpetuals are similar, but not exactly the same as the Y dollar contract. They have some uh, in principle or philosophical similarities on, on how they are designed, etc. but they're a different beast. Now, if you remember the perpetuals, and I've done a video for this, uh, which we'll put in the comment section, uh, they have an expiry date, which means that they can go up and down with respect to the price, but on the expiry date, they lock exactly $1 worth of collateral. So if you got the Y dollar on market, you can be certain that as of the expiry date, you can get $1 of the underlying collateral. Now, the perpetuals do not have an expiry date. So the question becomes, how do you ensure the peg? Now, as I explained over here, as of the expiry date, the Y dollar will always be able to unlock $1 worth of collateral. So when uh, it is above the peg, you can, arbitrages should sell, when it's below the peg, they should buy and sell and so on, because they are certain that on the date of expiry, they can get exactly $1 worth of collateral. Now, in theory, there could be large differences, deviations from the peg, Uh, but on expiry, as I mentioned, the wider law locks exactly $1 worth of WETH or NBTC. Uh, now, if you were a minter, okay, if you minted the Y dollar, then you can redeem it for $1 at any time on or before expiry. But even if you got it on market, okay, on date of expiry, you can, you can be certain that you'll be able to claim $1 worth of underlying collateral. So why dollar peg is actually relatively easy. Okay? Uh, however, the further the expiry date, the potential deviations can be large. So and that is how most future options also work. As it gets closer to the expiry, the deviations from the peg should progressively reduce till it exactly matches. Uh, now, if there is no expiry, how do you ensure that the peg is achieved? How to ensure that those who get the perp dollars on market without minting have a good peg? Let's walk through an example. Let's say this is the amount of collateral which you have locked, and this is the amount of perps which you have minted. Now, if uh, the value of the perp is greater, then its market value is more than a dollar if it's above the peg and vice versa. Now, the actual peg based upon what the Y dollar should be worth, the actual claim should be this much. But if the market value of the perpetual is more, then you could end up having a claim to a larger amount of the underlying collateral. And vice versa, of course. So what we really need is a mechanism in that case to reduce the market value claim to the true claim, okay? So we need to be able to reduce the market value claim to this, which is the true value. This is the market value, this is the true value. Uh, and that is achieved by something called as the funding rate. So when the perp dollar is not exactly $1, so when it is not a peg, the funding rate is used as a mechanism to adjust uh, your claim, okay? And the liquidator does not use market value versus collateral value. Uh, what is used instead is the adjusted market value versus the collateral. So if perp, perp dollar is above, one, then the funding rate or funding multiplier 
really is less than one and vice versa if perp dollar is less than one then the funding rate is greater than one so it essentially what it does is it tries to get the value adjusted perp dollar value adjusted perp dollar claim to an accurate amount based upon ensuring that it is at peg. So the incentive to liquidations uh, due to the perp dollar peg deviations is completely removed. So you can be sure that your collateral would be unduly uh, liquidated. So for example, if the perp goes too high at market value, that doesn't mean that your collateral is at risk. The system will recognize what it's really worth and the actual claim will only be this much. So that means that you wouldn't be uh, unjustly liquidated because the market value wasn't good. And then arbitrages should bring the per dollar value back to one dollar because that should reflect the actual claim which a liquidator should have on the lock collateral. So if your claim is not really that much, then its value should really, really be an indicative uh, indication of the adjusted claim uh, the perp dollars have. And that's how the perpetual sort. But there is more. So let's try to understand the pegging mechanism a little bit better. Now, if you remember the Y dollar correctly, uh, on expiry, you are allowed to take your excess collateral. You just have to keep enough collateral to that is enough which allows the y dollars which are in circulation to have a claim on uh, so for example if you locked in hundred dollars worth of eth and minted 60 y dollars you don't have to actually repay <coughs> the 60 y dollars to get your 40 dollars worth of eth back assuming the price has not changed uh, you don't have to really redeem the Y dollars at all to get your excess collateral back. You can all on expiry, you can take your excess collateral and keep the Y dollars in circulation if you want to. For a better explanation of how the Y dollars work, you can look at our Y dollar video, which we will link in the comments or description section. Now, <clears throat> the thing is, perps have no expiry. There is no expiry date for the perps which means that there is no real mechanism by which the sponsors or minters of the perpetual dollars or perp dollars can uh, unlock ex excess collateral. Their only way to unlock excess collateral is they have to pay back the perp dollars and then the entire collateral is unlocked. There is no partial collateral unlock at all because there is no expiry date on which you can actually do it. So what this means is if the pop dollar is trading above $1, if we are in this range, then the actual claim to locked ETH or BTC or whatever is the underlying collateral is actually lower. So the market value of the pop dollar might entitle you to this much amount of claim. But remember that we have this funding rate mechanism or funding multiplier mechanism, which actually pushes down the claim on the collateral downwards. If the price of perp dollar is above the peg mechanism. So the actual claim is lower. Now, the person who has minted the sponsor or the minter has minted the perp dollars and he spends them. He locks in collateral, mints the perp dollar and gives it to anybody who is willing to accept it. <clears throat> and there's no reason why somebody shouldn't accept the perp dollar because it is backed by liquid collateral. Uh, so it's good money, hard money. Uh, but let's say the person who minted it, he put in $100 worth of ETH uh, and minted $60, 60 perp dollars. And he wants to get his ETH back because ETH has gone up in value. Uh, or he just wants his ETH back, his will. Then he has to pay, has to pay back 
before the collateral is unlocked. So there is no partial unlock because there is no expiry. Remember this. This is a perpetual. This is not an expiring contract. So how do you do that? You have already spent the perp dollars. So you have to buy the perp dollars on market. Okay, like Uniswap or any other exchange. Now, if the perp dollar is trading above one, then the minter is paying, the minter or the sponsor is paying more. Okay, this is important. Then the amount of collateral he can claim back. So for example, if it was $100 worth of ETH and 60 perp dollars were minted, and this 60 perp dollars have a claim on $60 worth of ETH. And it is unlocking uh, locking $100 worth of ETH. Then in order to actually, if the perp dollar is trading above $1 and he will have to spend say $65 to unlock $60 ETH. Okay, uh, so collateral has to be unlocked. So which means that he has to pay more on the market to unlock a smaller amount of money. He can't really write it off because uh, that $60 is still not a zero amount. It is still more than zero. Uh, and if he just chooses to never unlock it, that's fine because there's no interest rate at, at the moment. But if he... Uh, chooses to unlock, then he has to pay more to the market, which means there is a uh, payment from the sponsor to the market. Okay. And if the perp dollar is trading below $1, then the minter has to pay less than the claim is for. So if it was a $60 claim, he might have to only pay $55 to buy the perpetuals and unlock his $60 worth of claim. So in this case, the minter is actually making money from the market, okay? So that is the mechanism which is used for value transfer. And this is only triggered in the scenario of a liquidation or unlocking of collateral which is again a form of uh, liquidation. You're really liquidating your own position. So it, it is kind of only triggered when there's a liquidation. Uh, the market sort of understands what it is worth. Uh, and that means that there are no extra calculations than what is actually necessary and the peg is still maintained. And because there are no excess calculations continuously, it is incredibly gas efficient. And that's a very clever mechanism which I've seen repeatedly with UMA. Uh, they try to reduce the number of calculations which are required to be on chain and makes the whole protocol quite gas efficient. And it's a very clever mechanism to, uh, they have used a series of clever mechanisms to offload the grunt work to off chain without compromising the decentralization process. So that's also one of the reasons why open DAO stable coins are built on the UNI protocol. So that's how the perpetuals work. And uh, we are going to build a series of stable coins uh, using this. Uh, we are doing ETH, BTC, DSGs lined up, and there are several other projects in the wings uh, which are going to take advantage of this uh, mechanism to use their tokens as collateral and mint stable coins. A uh, little bit similar to how MakerDAI used to work with ETH and uh, version one DAI, which was SAI. Uh, and this is a massive opportunity for projects to unlock the liquidity in their tokens without having to force token holders to sell it. So if you're long on a project, for example, if you're long DST, then you can actually access some capital without having to sell it. Uh, so it's, it's a massive win-win for all projects as well as us. And we are going to roll out more collaborations uh, using the perpetual dollar in the coming few days. Thanks so much. Talk to you later. Bye.